Hello and welcome to uh, a bit of a, a bit of a tip. Um, not the man cave. The man cave is always a tip, but um, it's a tip about uh, basing paint or whatever you want to call it. Games Workshop produced this like paint, and it's for basing, um, and it's quite expensive in my view. So I thought um, I'd show you something that somebody showed me a while while ago uh, about using uh, acrylic mediums. Now, acry what acrylic mediums are are like uh, thick acrylic paste. Now, the idea behind it is I used them years ago at art college for uh, putting into acrylic paints, and then you use them like you would use like oil paints and stuff when you do like thick layers of paint and. Uh, you can get different effects um, with it. You can you can have acrylic mediums with um, like pumice in, and the, the, the ones that I've got's got black lava in, so it's black pumice basically, um, and that gives a, a, a sort of a finer texture. You can get coarse textured stuff. You can get smooth stuff, um, and it's just basically for thickening up acrylic paints for when you're using them with palette knives or whatever. But you can use them to make basing pastes or basing paints uh, similar to the ones that are in the little pot that Games Workshop sell. Uh, and the difference is, right, I mean, you, you can buy a pot of this, and I'll show you the one that I'm going to be using, and this one is uh, Galleria Black Lava Texture Gel. So it's, a, this is, you know, so it's got like uh, little bits of pumice in, black, pum, black pumice. Um, so it gives a little textured surface. You can get smooth ones, like I say. I think uh, you can get one that crackles as well, so you can make like lava bases. Uh, but I'm not going to swear to that. I I do know there are ones that you can make, them and, they, and, and when they dry, they do crack. Um, but anyway, but the thing is, this is like if I show you. Yeah, it sort of looks like that. So it's sort of like a grey whitey colour. Now. Um, because it's an acrylic medium, it's designed to take colour. So you just need a little bit of colour to put in it to change it completely. So any colour you have, so any acrylic paint that you have, uh, I've never tried it with the metallics, but you know, let's say you've got blue, red, green, orange, purple, pink, whatever, you can add it to this and it will take that colour faithfully. Um, so it changes. It goes a bit lighter at first, but when it dries, it dries with the pretty dark. Well, it dries with the luminosity of the paint that you put in, so uh, it dries. You know, so uh, unlike stuff like polyfiller, uh, if you use, if you try to put paint in polyfiller uh, or spackle, as I think uh, the rest of the world calls it, it takes so much paint to make it change colour. It's unbelievable. The other stuff you can use, you can use ground pigments in it as well, you know, like paint pigments or um, weathering powders, uh, but they're just, they're just pigments. Um, and you get the same effect. You can also add uh, sand or bits of grit or whatever, so you can make it as lumpy as you want. Uh, you can buy the smooth stuff and add sand. I'm lazy, I bought stuff with which is textured already. Um, but you know, you can do loads of stuff with it and it's really, really good. And it's quite cheap as well. I mean, this is a 250 milliliter bottle. So this is what? Uh, 10 times, 20, this is 20 times the amount that you get in a little Games Workshop bottle. In fact, it's probably more than that. Uh, and it only costs six quid. So there you go. It just shows you how much you can get out of it. And you use it in conjunction with cheap paints. Well, I do anyway. So I just use it with cheap paints from uh, Hobbycraft, which is a hobby store in the UK. But I'm sure all the hobby stores around the world have these same cheap paints. Do you know what I mean? Like the cheap 50p, £1 acrylics. And um, the world's your oyster. So anyway, I'll show you what I do with it. There's two ways of using it. You can use it without any paint, without any colouring in it, which I use for doing like... Um, if I'm doing like single based miniatures, I'll put it on first so as I cover it, so as I just paint the whole thing as one go. Uh, or, um, you know, uh, if you've got multiple bases like you have with like Flames of War or um, Napoleonics, uh, historic battles, uh, 10mm bases, you know, sort of. Um, uh, 
you know, or even with the, uh, you know, these sort of bases. Do you know what I mean? Um, where you paint the miniatures first, or on a different thing, and then put them onto a base. You just put the gel on, and it sort of makes base stuff. Anyway, I'll show you what I'll show you how I got on. Um, so let's have a look. Okay, the first thing is, as I said, it comes in like pots like this, and uh, you get a bit of the you get a bit of the stuff out if you can. Just a just a wad of it on your on your spatula thing. Got a mini, yeah. And obviously, you just spread it on. And this is going to be a bit awkward because um, I've got to do it and try and keep. Uh, in shot because obviously you're going to want to all be able to see that. So you just spread it round like that. Yeah. This is like the first. This is like one way of using it. If you're doing like one minute at a time, and you just want to, do you know what I mean? Just base the mini up uh, simply. Just do this. Just let me move this because I can't get at it because of the camera. Hang on. Just get another load out. Oops. And uh, bang it on, and it's as simple as that. Okay. So I mean, you can work it a bit. You can do things like if you were say say you were doing like water bases, you could put ripples in and stuff because it is fully pliable. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you're doing water bases, you wouldn't use one with grit already in it. You can use one of the smooth ones, but it's things like that. Uh, you can get stuff I think that, that, that that's like crackled, so you can do lava bases and all sorts. Dirt cheap, so the one thing it does do, and I will sort of point this out, is it does actually when it dries it shrinks a little bit, but um, you can blend it over the the existing base with a bit of work. But you know, if you get a wet brush or something, you know, a damp brush, not a wet brush, a damp brush, just uh, just dibble it over. I don't bother because I'll be covering this with um, flock and stuff, so I'm not that fussed. There you go, that's the first way. I'll show you what it looks like when it dries, when it dries. Okay. So after a wee while they dry, well this one isn't quite dry, it's still got little white bits in. Um, when you put it on, I'll just show you this quickly. Um, if you get stuff like little rocks and stuff, you can just stick them in. Just push them in and they like go right in. And if you just get dribble a little bit of PVA on to seal them, well I do it on for these because it's actually cat litter. But you dribble a little bit of PVA on and it sets it like rock in there. So the rocks look a lot more realistic because it's like embedded in the in the uh, thing. I mean this one isn't dry yet but um, one of the ones I did earlier is drier. Uh, and I've painted it up just to show you what it looks like when you've painted it. I think it was this one that we did before. So as you can see it's quite rough. On the top and we painted it over because just you know it's a single figure and we're going to paint the base last i just painted the base brown quickly uh just to do just to show you um what it looks like when you i mean this is just the one i've used so it's like just like the, the medium fine grain stuff but um i so thought i'll just quickly just show you how it comes up without any alteration so you can see it's quite, I don't know whether you can see that or not, I mean, it's, it's pretty good, there you go, so you get a, that's without adding anything to it, just straight out of the bottle, uh, which as you can see is uh, quite textured. It looks dead smooth doesn't it, but, until, but then when you actually, when it dries and you put a bit of paint on it, it does come up. Spung a bit of Agrax on it now. You can really sort of so there you go. So you get your stuff and you just that's probably a bit too much for this particular base. And you know, obviously if you're doing loads of bases you just uh, you, you, know, you can do a fair bit, but uh, once it's gone hard, it's gone hard. 
Um, I suppose that'll be about enough. Okay. Remember, though, let's put the lid back on here. This isn't the actual lid. The actual lid, um, for some bizarre reason, is sort of like that shape. So you squeeze it out, but I just get it out with a thing. And then, get yourself a bit of this. Hang on a second, just let me make sure that's uh, in there. Bit of this. And, and you don't need a lot. Unlike polyfiller, this stuff, because it's because it's acrylic medium, it takes colour really well. You, you just basically mix it up, and as you can see, it's taking that colour, and it's not unlike polyfiller or speckle, I believe that you, you know, is the American term for it. It doesn't really take much paint to make this stuff change colour all the way through. Yeah, so. I think I agree that's fairly coloured and I only put a little bit in. I think I probably put a bit too much in to be honest. Um, mix a bit more in. It's just picking bits up at the side there. Now I'm not quite happy with that colour. It's a bit too... Uh, the wrong colour. So I'll add a different colour in. Well, that's all like a lighter brown. Just a touch. There we go. Oops. There we are. Just a little bit more. Mix that in. The idea is that I don't want to mix it thoroughly. I want it in different patchy bits. It's just the sort of bases that I'm doing. So there you go. And now I've made that a bit too light. I'll just bung a bit more of this in. There we are. It will dry darker. But I just want it quite dark because I'm making mud. So there we are. Now at this stage, if you want to do a bit more um, gritty, you can add uh, stuff like this. Oops. You know, like bits of grit and sand and stuff, just to make it a bit more grittier. Or not, and I don't. So. Uh, I'll leave it to that. And basically, as I say, it is acrylic, so you just stick it in water, give it a wipe, and it's brand new. Get a base and multiple figures on. As I say, it's going to be awkward, and I'm not going to do the whole base because it's just a bit too difficult with the camera. And you might recognise these from the uh, last Napoleonic update. And you put it in, and then just sort of like daub it on. So, as you can see, it's very much like the textured paint that uh, you buy in £2.40 tubs for 12.5 millilitres. I think I put a bit too much liquid in this, but never mind. So anyway, that's that's basically the principle. And in true blue blue Peter style, I'll show you one I did earlier. Let's bear with me. It ends up looking like that, which in my mind is pretty good. It's a good texture. Um, I'll probably add a little bit more to this because, as I said, it does shrink. So I'll probably just run through and do a bit more, probably of a different uh, a different colour. You know, a different brown just to vary the, the, the ground a bit uh, before I put the sort of static grassy stuff on. So, yeah, okay, I'm gonna finish this one now. Okay, so after about what five minutes or so of uh, messing about, got the base covered. Uh, it's still wet at the moment, you can still do stuff to it while it's wet. Um, like one of the things that I do is obviously it's quite messy, so I'll just run my finger along the edge of the base just to take the overhangy bits off. Make sure you clean your hands. Uh, you don't want sticky stuff everywhere, do you? Um, 
so yeah there you go like I say it'll dry now uh, I'll just show you what I mean about the stones I'll just get a couple of stones these are stones so. um, I'll just pick, uh, let's try and get a few I can big ones so I'll just get some little bits of rock and you can just drop them in like so Doing it so as you can see, and it's like quite awkward. Uh, I normally don't have to model like a contortionist, so you just get that, and then you just press the rocks in. You don't have to press them in hard; you just stick them in, and they'll sort of sit naturally in the ground. Yeah. And then in about half an hour or so. When the surface of this stuff sort of goes off, I'll uh, just dribble a bit of PVA in. Pop a couple more. I mean, I could actually just drop loads on, but I'm not going to because I, you know I don't want this rocky. But you sort of get the idea. So I'll just dribble a bit of PVA over the top of that in about half an hour's time. Like I said, the surface will go quite. Um, dry within about half an hour to an hour to touch yeah it takes about 12 hours to dry out properly um, although you can deal with it before then um, what I generally do and I'm not going to go through the whole basing process but uh, once it's dry I'll give it a quick wash of something like you know Agrat Thirst Shade or you know black or something depending on what sort of ground you want uh, just to give it a bit more dark tones and then just just lightly dry brush it um, where you can then uh, just stick static grass on it and clumps and flowers or whatever it is that you want it's really good but there you go that's how I base uh, stuff without having to buy the textured paint from Games Workshop and it works out really well, especially for bases like this where you've got lots of miniatures on uh, which have been painted beforehand. Uh, another thing is you might get some on some of the miniatures around the feet if you're really fussed about that. If you just if you just get while it's in this state, you just want a damp brush and you just brush off the bits where you touch the miniatures. Like I say, it's acrylic, so it will come off. It's not like anything deadly. Um, but with a bit of practice, you'll sort of soon get the hang of it. You know. That's one of the things with it, you, you know, you've got to do it a few times as you get the hang of it. Just things that you can experiment with, for example, um, if you think it looks a bit too smooth, uh, and this is, you just have to judge this by using the stuff, is, uh, and you want it a bit, a bit more rough, if you just get a flat that you see, you can pull it up as well. But that's, this is after about 10 minutes of it being on. Uh, you can sort of ruffle it a bit more if you want it a bit rough. If you think it's a bit too rough and you want it smoother, then obviously you just do the opposite and just pat it down. So you can work it for quite a while, up to about half an hour, I'd say, until until the until the skin develops. So, so it's a good way of just. I mean, you don't have to go all over it because obviously you're only really looking at the bits that you see, but. Yeah, then you mock it up like I just did. That's <laughs> not matter. Uh, but you can just like make little peaks and rough ground and stuff. So, alright. So, the eyes dry now. It's the morning after the night before. So, it's uh, quite quiet, well, in my opinion. Um, it does dry shiny. Uh, you can combat that if you wished. By bunging a bit of matte medium in it in in, in the mix, uh, I appreciate that everybody's got matte medium. Uh, maybe not everybody's made their own washes and stuff, but or had the need to have matte medium. But you can bung that in. Uh, that probably that'll probably take some of the shininess out. But bear in mind, the more liquid you add to it, the runnier it's going to get. Uh, or you know, whack over it with a with a diluted matte coat, or just the dry brushing uh, that you're going to do and the washes and stuff um, to bring out the ground um, that will do something about taking down its shininess and the other thing 
to bear in mind is that if you are going to do uh, bases uh, for a multiple unit try and do the batch in one go because obviously the paints the, the colors are not going to match the finish may not fin match so I only done this one these two just for this video you see so um, just bear that in mind when you do a proper unit of multiple bases because I've got you know another base to do for these and then a, 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 a command stand as well so um, try and mix up a batch in one go okay so there you go that's um, that's using acrylic texture gels uh, uh, to make basing stuff like the texture paints that you can get from Games Workshop and probably other paint things but that's all they are they're just an acrylic gel with a colour added uh, um, obviously experiment you know I mean if you get some of this stuff you can experiment with it and see what mixed levels you want what you can do with it what you can add to it um, so there you go experimentation is the key catch you later thanks for watching Thank you.